Good afternoon. Uh, I, I received this word uh, from the Lord, and today is January 28, 2024. Um, I received this around 3.33 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. When I asked the Lord specifically who this was going to be for, he just said, my people. Um, and when he went to clarify, you know, what that is um, specifically, he's saying the, the sheep, the lost sheep that he's calling home. Um, as always, I would encourage you, test every spirit. Do not just take it face value and believe everything that you hear. You are to take it back to the Lord in your own personal prayer time while you're meditating on his word and to ask him yourself, Lord, is this coming from you? If it's coming from you, is it something that pertains to me? Is there something that you want me to learn from this? Uh, which parts pertain to me and what can I do about it? That being said, this is what the Lord said. Where are you? Why have you grown weary of me? Have I not looked after you with my all-seeing eyes since the womb? Come back to me, you who have wandered afar off. It is not too late. Your sin has caused a separation between us. I long to comfort you and to bind up your wounds. Why are you running from me? Where will you go that I cannot find you? I am God. Does he who made the eye not see? Does he who made the ear not hear? You are wondering why I have forsaken you, but you traded the time we could have spent together for the idols in your heart. How have you let these things take my place? They cannot give you lasting joy, but in my presence is fullness of joy. They cannot take away your burdens, but my yoke is easy and my burden is light. They cannot take away your shame, but I promise you a double portion and to take away the shame of your youth. They cannot give you lasting peace, but my peace is everlasting and surpasses understanding. Why are you hiding from me? Where can you go from my spirit? Because I am silent, you think I am not there, but it is written, I will never leave or forsake you. I keep my promises. You are chasing after vanity and the things of this world. The earth and everything in it are perishing, but my promises are eternal. I shed my blood to bring you near to me, to reconcile the relationship we once had. I have always known you. I know your spirit. You have always been mine. I am your father. Can a mother forget her suckling child? Yet even so, I will not forget you. My thoughts of you outnumber the grains of sand on the seashore. You rebel against my laws, but I put them in place to protect you from the evil one. The whole world is under his sway, but he's got nothing in me. I am coming soon, and I long to take you with me. Grab a hold of my outstretched arm, and I will pull you out of the miry clay, the muck and the mire. I will cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Take away the stain of your transgression. I will give you a new heart and renew a right spirit within you. This new heart I give you will cause you to desire to do my will. You will obey me out of love, not fear. I will bind up your broken heart. I will heal you of your afflictions. I will remove the shame and the guilt from your sin. I will take it away. I will comfort you as a father comforts a child in distress. My perfect love will cast out your fears. I will give you rest from your enemies and shield you from those who seek to do you harm. I will nurture and protect you like a lioness watches over her cubs. I will supply all your needs according to my riches and glory. No good thing will I withhold from you, from those who love me. I will watch over you like a hawk. I will protect you and guard you as with a shield, but you must turn from sin. You must turn from rebellion. 
You must turn from wickedness and remember it no more. You must come out from among them, for friendship with the world puts you at enmity with me. Believe in my Son, Jesus Christ. Follow him. Repent of the way you have been living. Confess you have sinned. Ask me to forgive you, and I will remember your sins no more. I will crown you with glory, and I will make you mine forever. They that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Call upon me while I am near. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of salvation is eternal life to them that believe. These are the following confirmations he wanted me to share. 1 Kings chapter 18 verse 36, just this part. Let it be known this day that you are God in Israel and I am your servant and that I have done all these things at your word. 1 Kings 18 verse 39. Now when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they, and they said, The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 17 Therefore do not be unwise but understand what the will of the Lord is Ephesians 5:26 to 27 that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word that he might present her to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that she should be holy and without blemish 1 John chapter 4, verses 16 to 18. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. And he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in the world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Because fear involves torment, but he who fears has not been made perfect in love. Zechariah chapter 3 verses 1 to 2. Then he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to oppose him. And the Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is this not a brand plucked from the fire? Zechariah chapter 3 verse 4. And he answered and spoke to those who stood before him saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And to him he said, See, I have removed your iniquity from you, and I will clothe you with rich robes. And I said, let them put a clean turban on his head. And they put the clothes on him. And the angel of the Lord stood by. Joshua 14, 9. So Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land where your foot has trodden shall be your inheritance and your children's forever, because you have wholly followed the Lord my God. And Ruth 2.10 so she fell on her face, bowed to the ground, and said to him, Why have I found favor in your eyes that you should take notice of me, since I am a foreigner? Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 to 8. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death on a cross. And the last one is 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 2 to 4. But we have renounced, meaning come out of agreement with the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, 
commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them.